What's up everyone? Welcome to another Art of War YouTube video. I'm John. This I'm Jack. Is Jack. This is Jack. This is me. And we are here to talk to you about how to use math in your games of Warhammer 40k. Don't worry, we're not going to make it too complicated. We're just talking about using quick math at the table to get results and know what your army is going to do. Sometimes people know what their units do based on experience, right? If I've shot 10 multi-melters into a rhino 100 times and it died 99 of them, then you know what? I'm not gonna do the math. I'm gonna trust that this is gonna happen. Maybe you've got massive overkill. Your entire knight castle is shooting into one guardsman. I'm not betting on the guardsman this time. But it is important, especially in a scenario that you maybe haven't used, haven't experienced before, you haven't rolled out before, it's important to know what's gonna happen. Sometimes people take a shot and it just fails horribly and they're like, wow, I really didn't expect that to happen. Sometimes it's bad dice, but a lot of the times they didn't actually understand what the math was gonna be. That's right. You, you want to know before committing to a plan what your likelihood of success mm -hmm. is, whether it's a realistic plan to complete. I've definitely seen people make charges into units they had no prayer of killing and then get surprised after it didn't work. Yep. So you don't want to be that guy. You want to, you want to know what you're doing when you're going into your plan. You certainly do want to know that. So how you use math at the table, frankly, I find it easiest to just break the probability of a D6 down into fractions. And let's also be clear here, when we say average or expected value, that doesn't mean you're gonna get that result every time. You shouldn't trust average, because average means that half the time, it's not gonna make it to average. That's right. So, so you just wanna use the average result as more of an indicator of how likely you are to achieve something rather than what is definitely gonna happen. If you kill a unit twice over, it's probably gonna die. Might not, but probably is. Mm -hmm. If you on the dot kill it on average, that means half the time you will and half the time you won't, and you need to make a plan based around that. Exactly, so really quick, basic math at the table. Uh, let's take a dice that passed on a three plus. You're shooting a melt gun from a space marine. Uh, you hit on a three plus, you hit on a three, four, five, or six. So four results out of six. It's pretty easy to know that hitting four times out of six, two out of three, 66% chance, however you want to break it down, that's pretty basic. Just about everyone already knows that. But where it gets a little trickier is where you factor in rerolls. Let's say uh, that you maybe hit on threes, but you reroll ones because of your captain. So let's look at this a little deeper. I find that I just take fractions and instead of making them out of six, I make everything out of 36. Right. So that it's just a little bit easier and I can factor in rerolls. Because you never are gonna use rerolls of a reroll, it's really never gonna get harder than out of 36. That's right. Uh, and it's actually very easy to do on your phone as well, which is something I like. Just that basic calculator app, if you've got an iPhone or an Android, perfect yep. for me. Just whip it out at the table, you know. Mm -hmm. I have six attacks, they hit on threes, so that's mm -hmm. gonna be 24 out of 36. Yep. You can plug that in, and then they wound on twos, that's gonna be 30 out of 36. Yep. And then you can just see, oh, I'm gonna get, you know, X amount of attacks. Exactly, so what I always do personally is if I'm trying to like kind of explain real simple, like how, how is it gonna work? Just if maybe you're not a math person, right? <laughs> we trust me, we are tell math people. Let's say that you uh, are gonna just, you know basic out of six, what your stuff does. But let's say you wanna figure out what like the, the fraction is out of 36. Let's say you've got a space marine tech that hits on a three and we're rolling ones. Let's just pretend to figure out what the fraction is that you have 36 of those and that you're gonna roll perfectly average. Right. So you're gonna roll 36 dice. Right. And let's just pretend here that you roll six sixes, six two, six three, six four, six five, six six. Literally perfectly average right in the middle. It's probably not actually gonna happen, but now you've got six ones, so you're gonna re-roll those, and those six rolls are gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, we're pretending that it went perfectly average here. That's gonna lead you with uh, 24 hits out of the original 36, because it's a four out of six times six, so mm -hmm. 24 out of 36. Then you re-rolled six dice and four of those were a three plus. That's right. So now you've got four plus 24 out of 36. So if you need to know, okay, what are the odds that my 20 attacks are gonna hit if they're space marines hitting on threes or rolling ones, you take 20, multiply it by 24 divided by 30, or 28 divided 20, by 36, yeah. if you got those real ones, and that is the expected value of hits you're gonna get. Yes. And you can do this exact same thing with wounds. It's never gonna get more complicated than out of 36. Yeah, and after a while, you'll know the numbers by heart. I know a five up reroll ones is 
14 out of 36. Mm -hmm. I know that a four approval ones is 21 out of 36, 28 out of 36 for three approval ones, yep. 35 out of 36 for two approval ones. And at some point, if you do this enough, you develop mm -hmm. this skill, you can just tap it out in like two seconds. Exactly, you're gonna have that memorized. So I've actually done this at the table where I wasn't, I actually did it this last weekend, where I wasn't exactly sure how much damage I was gonna do. And I'm like, eh, let me just run the numbers real quick to see what average is gonna be like. Now let's let's put a caveat on that average, and I'm actually gonna give an example of why you shouldn't trust it. Let's say you fire a valiant harpoon at a rhino, right? We're going as skewed as possible here. Yeah, it's, technically that shot has an average expected damage value. It does. It technically, does. it does. It does. So let's say you fire this valiant. Uh, it it hits on uh you know two out of three times ballistic skill three. So this one shot is 0.66 hits. Right. And it wounds on twos. So okay, that's five out of six times. Five out of six, nice. The rhino doesn't get a save against this harpoon, and it's 10 damage. So you can say, okay, the average on this, this harpoon shooting a rhino is 5.5 damage. And while that is true, you will never get 5.5 damage no. from a Valiant Harpoon. You will either get a Rhino at full health or a Rhino that is dead. Yes. And there are no in-between. This is a flat tan damage weapon. It is either a zero wound or a 10 wound rhino. So yet. all the 5.5 means is mm -hmm. that you are roughly 50% chance. You're slightly above 50% chance to kill the rhino, mm -hmm. but you are roughly 50-50 to do it. Yeah, and so you shouldn't be disappointed when you shoot this Valiant Harpoon at a rhino and you do zero damage to it. And you know what? Yeah, maybe you could have killed it, but let's also you know be clear here, it wasn't an average that you bracketed the rhino. It was, it was really a coin flip. So this is obviously an extreme example, but it's gonna extend everything. So by the same token, if you do you know nine damage when the expected value is 10, that doesn't mean that you should do 10. It just means 10 can happen. Yep, yep. This Firing. 5.5 is not actually what's gonna happen. It's the, kind of the median of all the different results. Yes, a small amount of high damage attacks can be very swingy. Mm -hmm. Like four melty guns can either do 24 damage or zero. Yep. It's, it's very swingy, whereas a large amount of low damage attacks has a very it adheres to averages almost all the time. Uh, a quick example would be your termagant unit that fires 90 shots and then re-rolls hits. That is incredibly reliable damage mm -hmm. because the odds that 90 shots swings wildly one way or another is a lot lower than, you know, four. Exactly. So when you're doing math at the table, you know, don't take it as the law. Is, I think this is actually really important. Don't, you know, as soon as you don't go below average, well, that happens 50% of the time. So don't, don't take that as a guarantee this is what's gonna happen. Yes. But what are the things that you should math out? Uh, a big one for me is always, uh, if I'm charging something, let's just, maybe it's a unit I haven't charged before, let's take a look at like, okay, how likely is this to work? And it's especially harsh when maybe you, you're you used to a unit doing something, but uh, maybe you don't have rerolls. So like, let, let's say here that I'm gonna charge my blade guard veterans into 10 witches. I'm like, yeah, blade guard are much better than witches. If you go in there and you kill two, would you be disappointed by that? Not really. They have a four up invuln. You're hitting them on threes. You're wounding them on threes. It's it's very swingy. Like four ups tend to be pretty swingy. Mm -hmm. um, so you, yeah, I mean, I would be disappointed, but no. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be whining yeah. about it. If you it. just charge three blade guard in, that's you know they're they're four attacks each on the charge. Maybe it's five on the sergeant. So you're talking thirteen attacks. That's right. Again, you hit on three. So let's you know let's take uh, thirteen here. And let's go two divided by three. So uh, it takes you down to 8.66 hits. Your strength five, you wound on threes again. Okay, easy. Times two divided by three. Okay, 5.7 wounds now. Yep. And you know what? They've got a four pin in combat. So you can just divide that by two. And we're at 2.88, you know, repeating forever dead witches. Someone may maybe didn't do the math and they're like, I bet my witches are gonna kill, are gonna die to these blade guard, and they're gonna be surprised when that doesn't happen. Yes. And uh, that's a big thing. That's where this is a scenario where you should have done the math and realized, you know what, if, if this is what's happening, my odds of killing these witches, it's actually not that high. Sometimes there can be defensive mechanics mm -hmm. that will reduce your damage in ways that you haven't don't expect if you haven't yep. done it before. But if you math it out, you will know how much you should do. A good example of this is, uh, actually a great example of this is aberrance. Oh my goodness, the best example in the game. There's so, yeah. Two wounds, minus one damage, and a feel no pain, mm -hmm. but a five up save, very easy, very easy to kill, right? Well, actually, if you math it out, minus one damage, two wounds, and a five up feel no pain makes them very hard to kill versus what you would expect. Mm -hmm. I've had many times back when I played GSC, 
where somebody would charge like a knight into them thinking they would just kick them all over and then they would kill two. The aberrants would flip the knight and then they would get very disappointed until I told them they actually rolled hot. They actually rolled <laughs> higher than average into yeah. the aberrants. Exactly. Uh, a feel no pain roll where basically where you get to roll a dice to ignore a wound really changes the math. So let's say you've got a space marine next to an apothecary. Yes. And uh, there are two wounds each and they get a six up, uh, you know, we'd kind of call it a feel no pain and someone hits them with a bunch of two damage weapons. You know, maybe they get charged uh, by some rival incubi. And sure, a six up feel no pain makes you think one out of six, but let's look at how this actually changes things, where if you hit them with a two damage weapon, they make two rolls, and now there's a about one in three that they're going to pass when these saves. So for every three wounds you do to them, one of them they're gonna make a feel no pain and that's not gonna kill a guy which means if you do three wounds to them, you're probably only killing two models. Yes. And all of a sudden, if you just that feel no pain takes an incubi squad, maybe previously they would have averaged, you know, nine dead space marines on the charge. Maybe now they average six dead space marines on the charge. And if you're charging a seven or eight man squad, that really can make a difference. Yes, it certainly can. So if you crunch the numbers and you actually figure out how many wounds are gonna go in, how they're gonna get ignored, and how all that's gonna work itself out, you know, oh, this might be a little riskier than I might be comfortable with to go into the squad. Exactly, so some math you can do at the table, and that's just when you know your opponent's profile and yours, maybe it's something you haven't seen before and you're not really sure. Like this is your first time going up against uh, maybe orcs and you want to shoot your Volkite Contemptor that usually kills Raiders and Skitari troops, and you want to shoot it at a buggy. Maybe do a quick bit of math and figure out that a, a Volcon Contemptor, on average, does not kill an Orc buggy. Yeah. And if you were expecting that because it kills a Raider, you'd be disappointed when it shoots a buggy. But if you made a game plan around that, and then you found out after you rolled the dice, it's gonna Yikes. feel bad. You, you really don't want to run into that scenario. Yes, for sure. Um, that's, that's math you should do at the table. Math you should do at home, in my opinion, is things that you sh like making charges. So for example, when I'm Gene Slur Cult and I know I can get plus two to my charges and I can reroll the charge dice, I know that that makes me about an 84% chance of making the charge. And I'm gonna think about that when I'm bringing my units in from reserves. Uh, but you don't wanna be doing that math at the table. You wanna know in your head, is deep striking and charging a safe plan? What are the odds of failure? And you know what, 84% sounds really good, but hey, 15% of the time, I'm very sad. I'm not gonna make a game plan and hope I don't roll the 15%. Right. So you, you wanna know those kind of things in advance. Uh, other things is common shooting units. Like if you've got, you know, retributors with multi Malthus, you know that they hit on threes and they reroll ones, maybe yours ignore the heavy penalty because uh, your Argent Shroud, you may want to know, you know, about how many wounds does that do if I'm standing next to Morvan Vol, you know, a character in my list, this unit that's in my list, how many wounds is this going to put on Toughness 7? Yes. So I kind of will have that in my head where, all right, I'm putting eight multi multi shots out and I'm going to hit, you know, on threes, you're rolling ones. I'm going to wound on threes, you're rolling ones. I already have in my head that it's about 4.8 saves. And yes. I, need, I have this part ready. And now I roll up and my opponent's like, oh, well, this turn, this, you know, this vehicle has a five up invuln. And I'm like, oh, okay, so maybe those 4.8 saves, it's gonna be about three failed saves. And now I'm like, ooh, three failed saves into a dreadnought, it's minus one damage, I'm not in half range, that probably doesn't kill the dreadnought. Yes. Where maybe in the past, I've had my retributors kill a dreadnought without an invulnerable save, and I feel confident in it. If I have my part of the math ready before I go into the game, I know I'm gonna do about four or five saves under this Dreadnought. If they've got an invuln, all of a sudden it's not a sure thing and I wanna plan around that. Yes, and again, remember, the lower amount of dice that you're rolling, the more chance that the odds spike in some, in some way. You know, you're firing four shots on threes, on average that's 2.33 hits or so, but we've all seen it where you miss all four, you hit all four, it's just you're rolling four dice, mm -hmm. that sort of things happen. Yeah. Um, but if you're firing you know, 20 shots, 40 shots, 60 shots, it's a lot more likely you're gonna hit your averages at that point. Yeah, plus you know, we've all seen someone reroll a one into a one, right? That I've is correct. <laughs> uh, Rerolls by the similar token also even out your, mm -hmm. your odds because you're rolling more dice. Uh, if you're firing four dice, four shots, but you reroll them, you're actually firing eight shots, you're rolling eight dice mm -hmm. to get your averages, and it's much less likely that eight dice go weird than four dice go weird. This is why rerolls are so good. Yes, yeah, rerolls are a lot more likely to bring you back to average. Yes. And that's, as you said, that's a huge deal. If that first dice roll goes sideways, 
it happens, but you know, how often do we say, oh, thank God for chapter master, and we just roll the whole thing again? Yes. Yes, it happens all the time. That's mm -hmm. why uh, rerolls and abilities that mitigate rerolls are so important. Um, same thing uh, doing your math at home. Mm -hmm. If you have an idea or a plan where you're going to counter a specific unit yeah. by having an, a unit that can live through their damage output, mm -hmm. it, you want to math that out at home and make sure that that actually happens. You want to make sure, yeah. you know, my Telamon with minus one to hit and minus one damage and minus one strength, it actually lives through the things I want it to live through. Yeah, so I had this whole plan going into, you know, these free Buddha orcs where if they drove DAC jets up and shot at my Gaunts, it's 42 shots in the turn they call the speed walk, but maybe if I have a minus one to hit from uh, like some tier to debuffs like a Malanthrope, and it's 42 dice that hit on sixes, well, that only averages like seven hits. Right. And then they have to roll the wound, so maybe they only kill five or six Gaunts. I'm actually okay with that, and I did that math in advance because I needed to make sure that I didn't lose something quickly to give up the free Buddha buff where they get plus one to hit. Right. So I now know Okay, if they're shooting me through a forest, I have a Malanthrope, and they're hitting on sixes, all right, two Daka Jets is not gonna be enough to kill 30 gods, basically ever. Like, sure, you could roll 30 sixes on those 84 shots from two Daka Jets, but you know what? I'm willing to bet that they won't. Yeah, it's a very low odds of happening, and at some point, it is a dice game. You mm -hmm. do need to take, uh, make, put your plan into effect based off and odds of something happening. No plan is 100% perfect in a dice game, even two approvable is a one in 36 chance of failing. Mm -hmm. But you wanna give yourself the best odds of your plan working and to help you do that, you wanna know what the odds are. Absolutely, so one of my little rules of thumb is that whenever I do math, let's say my opponent has five intercessors on an objective and I wanna kill them. I'm not gonna shoot guns at them that average five dead intercessors. So I'll, I'll look at my math and I'll realize, oh okay, this Hellblaster squad on average kills, let's make up a number. 5.6 intercessors. And I'm gonna look at that and I'm gonna be like, you know what? That means that there's, you know, not 50, but there's not a small chance that I fail to kill it, right? right. But if they make one extra six up that average, Are you sure how often does that happen, right? You're supposed to roll one six on you five dice. Two. And then they roll two. It's like, can you even be mad about that? Like, that's not that big of a deal. But if that kind of thing can change your plan, maybe overcommit. Have a second squad of Hellblasters ready. Have a couple other guns ready to go. Cast a couple smites first if we can be squad out. Never just trust that average is going to happen. And the smaller, you know, the the variable is, or the smaller the number of dice being rolled, the more likely it is that things can just skew a little bit to left or right, and it massively changes the percentage. Yep. Uh, a typical thing also that you'll see during games is that if you feel like you're behind, you're willing to accept larger risks. So that might be the point where you no longer have the the luxury of of over committing to a unit. You have to just say. I hope this average happens because otherwise I'm toasted either way. Yeah. Um, but knowing what your odds are, knowing what you're expected to do will help you uh, yeah, be able to decide, decisions. do I think I'm at a 40% right now in the game? Do I have to take 40% chances of success, 30% mm -hmm. chances of success? Knowing your numbers can help you decide that. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, I think that just wraps up about everything I had to say here. Again, you don't want to use math to just dictate all of your game plan. You want to put as much room for yourself to recover from bad dice, but it does help to know what they're probably gonna do so that you can make plans. Never trust the dice, but still it's good to know what the most likely result is. All right. All right, thank you so much for watching this video, everyone. If you enjoyed this and you wanna check out more similar content, check out our YouTube channel. Make sure to like, subscribe, become a member, and get access to a bunch of exclusive content, such as part twos of our Art of War competitive 40K podcasts, and you can find a bunch more on the War Room. That's theartofwar40k.com, where we have a global community of like-minded players that are all looking to improve at all aspects of the game. We've got wonderful coaches such as myself, Jack Harpster, Nick Nonavati, Richard Siegler, and many, many more. They're there to teach you everything you need to know about getting better at competitive 40K, and you're gonna be in a like-minded community full of players who are all trying to do the same thing with the game that we love. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. Dive even deeper into competitive 40k and become a member of the world's most knowledgeable and positive community. The War Room is an exclusive group that brings together the world's best 40k players as coaches to help anyone from a newer player to an experienced tournament veteran learn, grow, and reach their goals with our shared hobby. Each week we offer a variety of live stream coaching matches centered around illuminating the thought process and in-game decision making of top players. We explain everything we're doing and why. You'll learn about the ever-evolving meta, 
match play mission theory, list making, and discussion of every faction in the game, and have access to analysis of all the latest rules. Our team of highly experienced coaches teach weekly clinics on each individual faction, strategy sessions on deployment and cool tricks, and meta-analyses each week during Meta Monday. We are committed to not only providing the best knowledge for players available, but also building a one-of-a-kind community. Come be a part of the War Room.